and welcome back guys to game number two between Immortals and Digital Chaos. This is of course the Star Ladder I-League Invitational Season 3. Immortals taking game number one. I'm not going to say convincingly. It was a back and forth game throughout. Um, they started off with the early lead getting a couple of kills onto Arbed. Then DC came back and it looked like DC were just going to steamroll. But then guess what? Immortals came back after that and then they just had a steady lead increasing the whole time DC managing to come back significantly throughout the game but every time that they came back they would lose one or two fights just from well placed um, you know positioning from the side of Immortals and constant aggression the aggression that we all came to know and love when they were with MVP Phoenix way back when a year ago basically and as soon as QO just got his BKB up, he got his items up, the side of DC couldn't do anything about that. Mason tried to get a couple of good Chronospheres off to try and keep him out. Unfortunately, every time just before that happened, the Wukong's command would actually be cast. And Immortals just secured the game, playing just very, very, very good and concise Dota. This is, of course, game two, and anything can happen. DC, of course, is coming back now off a four-game losing streak today, back-to-back. -back. However, if any team can do it, it is going to be DC. Lots of guys on chat were saying, Meepo game time. I mean, if anything, this is a game that you can do it. They have, they've already played it once today, but let's see what the picks and the bans are so far. For those of you that don't know, I'm Riddit. Check me out, Riddit Dota. Thanks so much for all the positive feedback and comments, guys, on stream. I love you guys so much, and I love chatting to you guys. But let's jump in. I mean, the picks and the bands have already started, like, they're already halfway through, basically. Bands from Immortal side. It is the Spirit Breaker as well as the Veno. No nature's profit band coming through here so that's quite interesting i wouldn't be surprised if it's either banned now or big during second phase but yeah spirit breaker veno being banned out digital chaos banning out the lich as well as the necro that left in the ancient apparition once again the exact same combo coming through and well ancient apparition was picked up in the first phase this time Wisp being picked up. I think it was Earthshaker is the first pick from DC. Then it was Wisp Jakiro or Io Jakiro. Sorry for that. Io Jakiro being picked up by Immortals followed by Ancient Apparition. So DC this time have decided, okay, well, the first game, they literally came back because of three heroes, even though they were far behind. It was a Void as well as a Ancient Apparition and a Death Prophet. Those three, if a good initiation is there, whenever Mason got like three heroes in the Chrono, they would win. But Immortals just positioned themselves so that that could never happen towards the end of the game. Now DC is going for the same kind of thing. Earthshaker, Echo Slam, as well as Ancient Apparition, Ultimate flying through. They still need something to draw in the heroes. Next bands coming from Immortals was the Faces Void as well as the Weaver. Weaver working for them very well in game number one. The Weaver and the Lich combo that actually came up there. But they took out the Weaver this time. Digital Chaos taking out the Monkey King which was a massive problem for them in Game 1, as well as the Batrider, which they played. MSS not having the best Batrider game. I think he ended off with a 2-10 and 10 score at that point. Um, but he still tried to do what he could. And we brought it up in Game number 1 in regards with who has the advantage between Bat and Monkey. And like lots of people were saying Batrider has it because he can drag the Monkey out. But we saw that and the Batrider could never get the Monkey King out of his ultimate. Nature's Prophet is picked up now as the first pick here for Immortals. We did say no Nature's Prophet ban, so that is nearly a guaranteed pick in most cases for them. So there you go, Nature's Prophet being picked up. Digital Chaos, what do we see coming up here for them? Is this going to be one of those games where you just want to go YOLO in and pick up a Darkseer Sven? Darkseer has been, oh, not Darkseer, Sven's been picked up right now. So do they just want to go for a full five-man YOLO strat, wombo combo, Sven, Darkseer, here we go? I would actually not be opposed to that because Earthshaker can, if Earthshaker gets a good fissure onto three heroes, Darkseer can blink in Vac um, into a stun from Sven. It's a probably, uh, I'm guessing right now, five second lockdown constantly, as well as the Ancient Apparition Ultimate flying through and an Earthshaker Echo coming up on anyone that gets caught basically from either the Vac or just a standard Earthshaker fissure because the Vac will follow up. 
So DC is going for a heavy wombo here, but a Sven can form up. Keep in, basically, keep in mind, Sven can also deep push out the Nature's Prophet, um, Treant, that will constantly be pushing out the waves. So let's have a look here and see what is Immortals going to pick up next. They have the Wisp, they have the Nature's Prophet, they have Global here. So what are they going to combo with the Wisp? Are we going to see a pause? Um, well, an offlaner being comboed with the Wisp, or are we going to see a carry being comboed with the Wisp? Well, the offlaner is the Nature's Prophet, but of course you can run Io Jakiro plus one in the aggro offlane, put the Nature's safe lane. But it's going to be a Bloodseeker here being picked up by Mortal, so... With the Nature's Prophet being able to TP, the Io being able to relocate anyone in, the Bloodseeker there as well being able to get the extra speed. Once again, Immortals is going for that mobility plus gank strat. This time it's not really mobility and gank, even though gank is there with the Io as well as the Nature's Prophet and the Bloodseeker. But they have more global as well as the mobility coming through. Digital Chaos has to try and counter this. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up something like a Silencer mid uh, as a Silencer core. Lots of people probably in chat are going to flame me for that, but I wouldn't be surprised. And Silencer here might actually be a very good pick. It can stop the Nature's Prophet, it can stop the Aya, it can stop the Initiation coming through from Immortals. But that's basically it. You need some kind of extra slow to stop the to stop the mobility, and the silence is not going to be enough, in my opinion. If it is going to be a Bloodseeker mid, possibly, uh, they can run the Earthshaker. You know, DC can put Orbit on the Earthshaker. I highly doubt it, but let's have a look and see. I mean, I'm just theory crafting right now because this can still go either way. And Immortals can just throw a curveball in there whenever they want. I mean, they're known for doing so. So let's see, moving into quite a bit of that extra time, Digital Chaos, last pick, well, their next pick before it is, it is banning phase again for them. Do they decide to pick up an offlaner or is the Earthshaker going to run solo offlane, which I would not be surprised, or are they going to put the Earthshaker on a pass forward to try and get him to roam? Let's have a look. And here we go, Beastmaster coming up now. We saw Beastmaster actually being banned out a couple of games yesterday while I was casting, and I think it was up against Digital Chaos as well. So, more lockdown, Earthshaker, Sven, Beastmaster, insane single target lockdown, AoE lockdown coming through here from DC, depending, of course, on how Immortals is spread out. But we saw in game one, they had a Void, which is AoE lockdown, but Immortals just spread themselves out during the mid to late game, and the Void just couldn't get a good Chrono. So the same thing is going to happen now with the Earthshaker, the Sven, and the Beastmaster. Of course, Beastmaster can blink in. Is he just going to go for the old school Beastmaster where it's a blink Necro book? Blink in, ulti, Necro, and kill? Or are we going to see more armor coming through from the Beastmaster, getting possibly Vlad's up, getting Omelette up? I mean, there's so many different builds on a Beastmaster specifically. However, I would like to see DC actually going more for Aura Strats here to try and counter the push and the gank coming through here from Immortals themselves. But the bans were out here from DC banning out the Timbersaw Puck being banned out by Immortals and Insta pick up on the Storm. So this is now it for Immortals. Are we going to see a mid here that combats with the Wisp or the Io? Or is this just, is this just a random Io that is just there just because? Bloodseeker pushing out a lane. Io can TP Bloodseeker in whenever he needs to or wherever he needs to be. Nature's Prophet can TP in. This might just be a, a standard Io without going into any kind of wombo. And it seems like it is. It, it's a standard Wisp Bloodseeker or Io Bloodseeker. Not like that Io Tiny, Io Slardar, Io CK kind of ganking potential. But it does give a lot of global potential. Cure up on the OD. I mean... Up against Orbit Storm. I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know who's going to get the better of this of this matchup. QO just playing phenomenally as a team player. And Obed actually doing extremely well. And I think he won mid lane, if I'm not mistaken, even though he died a couple of times. But let's have a look right now, guys. Game 2 is going to be underway. Of course, I am Riddit. Thanks so much, guys, for joining. This is the Star Ladder I League Invitational Season 3, Game 2 between Immortals and Digital Chaos. Who's going to win? Chat, spam it out. Who do you think is going to win? 
is DC going to come back? Are they going to redeem themselves or are they on a tilt? Or, are, or is Immortals just that good right now? And to be honest, I don't know. I do like the lineup that Digital Chaos has here. I do think that it can take on the likes of Immortals quite easily. So let's have a look here. Um, my money at this point, looking at the draft, is on DC. But let's get into game. It is planning phase right now. And then we'll go through the entire draft, go through everything that's happening right now. And the game's on. The game's live. Let's get it on. Sven, of course, he's being played here by Mason. Mason actually having a good game. And unfortunately, he struggled a bit towards the end of, you know, towards the mid and late game. But that was just because Immortals was positioned so, like, really good. He had a 5-1 and one, um, scoreline at the end of game number one, which was quite good considering the rest of his team um, sitting on 5 deaths, 7, 10, and 7 respectively. So Mason here on this fan, he'll be able to farm up like a beast and actually be able to, he should be able to outfarm anyone on the side of Immortals. I mean, Sven can keep up with an anti-mage towards the early stages of a game. So I do like this. Keep in mind, I'm not saying late stage of a game, but towards the earlier mid, mid stage of a game, I do feel that these, uh, that Sven can keep keep that up. Bulba running on the Earthshaker. He, of course, played the Night Stalker in the previous game. Oh, we, someone's being scouted out. MP here. MSS, he's running up on the Beastmaster. There's a stun coming through here on MP. It's not going to do anything. Just push him back. Abed running on a Storm Spirit. This is going to be so good to watch. I'm really going to enjoy it. And Moon Meander on a signature pause 5. That is going to be on an Ancient Apparition yet again. Game 1, he was also playing Ancient Apparition. MP running the Bloodseeker up here. Mid lane is going to be uh, Dubu. Oh, not mid lane. Uh, the Earth... Nah, oh, sorry about that. The Jakiro being run by Dubu. Uh, Kuo on middle. OD. It's going to be such a good matchup to see OD versus um, the Storm Spirit and see who's actually going to come out on top. Fabi is just going to be helping out in the middle lane a little bit. I think Kuo will need it in the first couple of levels specifically. Now Fabi on the Wisp off lane. It is going to be 4F. So that's the entire team of <laughs> MVP Phoenix. Uh -huh. Of Immortals. Let's see who actually gets the better in this early stage. Keep in mind, guys, the game was so up and down. Well, you know, game one was so up and down. I can't wait for this game to actually kick off and see what's happening. It is going to be an aggro try here. We saw that. Or we thought that might have been the case in game number one. But this might actually be first blood coming through here. Dubu is going to be blocked. Body blocked up here by Moon Meander. Who, are they going to give the kill to Mason? And Mason draws first blood. If I'm not mistaken, he got first blood in game number one as well. Or he was involved with it. I think Moon Meander might have stolen it, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, eh, Kappa KC. Like, literally Kappa kills still. But not really kills still, if you know what I mean. Bulba's being pinged out right now. This aggro tribe's working out very well for them. Bloodseeker is still level 1, has not leveled anything up just yet. Top lane is going to be MSS versus 4ev. I actually... This is going to be a difficult one. It's summons versus summons, but 4ev maybe at like level 4 or 5 might actually have a big advantage there being able to just... Uses Nature's Call and just right-click on MSS the whole time. Plus, he can TP in anywhere that is needed if Immortals decide to actually go for some kind of kill. But, dual lane up mid. Let's actually see how this is going. It is a 7-1 and one versus 5-0. and oh. So, slightly favoring the dual lane here on the OD. I'm just keeping an eye on the bottom lane, making sure everything's okay there. Yep. But experience-wise, Storm Spirit is getting this. And if he gets his level 6 up early, we're going to see a lot more early game potential. Early game ganks coming out here for Arbed versus the Phoenix. And top lane, MSS, taking quite a bit of damage here by 4 -up. And that's exactly what I said. As soon as this level 2 or level 3 up in Nature's Core comes up, he's just going to right-click onto MSS. And MSS can't really do much about that. Um, Io just getting up the bouncy runes right now, making sure he gives a little bit of free space to Q to actually get the experience back. But bottom lane, we do see an engagement coming through. The stun is there. Who's actually going to be the first one to drop it? It's going to be Bloodseeker. No, Bloodseeker is still alive. One more hit needed. He's going to try and deny himself to the creeps. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Moon Meander getting that kill, and well played. Two kills up for the side of DC. Meanwhile, middle lane, Abed. Is this going to be a try for a career snipe? 
There is a haste run up here for Io. He's, of course, just keeping vision, making sure if the courier does come up, even if it is a flying courier, he should actually be able to get the kill. Uh, three hits, four hits. I don't know. He does have haste, so I think he might be able to do it. But bottom lane, this is where all the action's at, and this is going to be yet another kill. Is it going to be in favor of Mason? He's being slowed up right now. Dubu being... Yep. Body blocked by Mason himself, and that is a third kill. Two up for Mason. I think they will have to try and rotate, even though Forever's doing very well here on the top lane. They will have to try and space this out, and if, if they do rotate... Oh, no, MP's in a lot of trouble right now. If he actually gets caught out, any kind of sun coming through, there is the slow. Is there... Yeah, well, Bulba comes through, positioning perfectly. Gets the stun, and who gets the kill? Bulba. Taking it for himself, 4-0 and oh up for DC. Well, 5-0 up for DC. MSS actually getting that. How did MSS manage to keep Nature's Prophet so low? Very well played there. And MSS, though, might be in quite a bit of trouble right now. He will have to TP out. And here you go. Yep. He TPs out. Is there going to be any kind of... Ooh, Forev not managing to actually get that kill. But there's a stun on to IO right now. And IO might be in a lot of trouble. He's getting hammered down. This is going to be 1 for 6 in favor of DC. I uh, did miss a kill though. Uh, who died? So the Storm Spirit actually did die in the middle lane up against Q. I'm not quite sure uh, when that happened. When I was busy looking at everything else happening currently. So it's a 1 in 6 trade off for DC at this point. DC doing actually very well. Looking at the net worth though. It's still 4 minutes in, so we can't really say anything about that. But the last hits is the big point here. And that is still going in favor heavily of the side of Immortals. OD up here on this dual lane as well as Forev just putting pressure on this tier tier one tower top. And uh, I saw pings coming out bottom, but nothing much is happening from that. Top tier one tower, they of course do have a glyph, but currently sitting on around a fifth HP. And Bulba busy wrapping around here towards the middle lane, trying to put is he gonna try and do anything up against mid? Nope. He just wants to get experience, wants to get as much as he can. Abed has to be very careful though. He is busy healing himself up with a bottle, using all those bottle charges as much as possible. And the line has been drawn back bottom. But was this just a fake back? Getting the smoke up here. And... Dubu, or uh, are they going to go a little bit down? No, they don't spot out MP. So, poor little Jakiro, currently sitting at 0 and 2. We are going to make this 0 and 3. There's the stun. There's everything. There's the kitchen sink that Sven just threw at him. And Mason on a killing spree at five minutes in. DC basically taking the game to Immortal, saying, hey, you can play aggressive. Guess what? So can we. Lots of people asking, what's going on, guys? A lot is going on. Looking at Immortals, I mean, this aggro try coming up here from DC just destroyed this bottom lane, but... Top lane and mid lane going heavily in favor of, of Immortals at this point. So we might see any kind of... Is there no Ice Path? There's no Ice Path, just slowing down MSS. Top tier 1 tower, very low. Mid tier 1 tower, very low. And bottom... Well, Io, you are very low, however. Forev's coming in. Is he actually going to be able to do anything? He does manage to save off Fabi just a little bit. Fabi's doing quite a bit of damage here with his Wisp. Can he actually survive this? He's busy juking it. Fabi, MVP. He actually manages to get out of Boba is dead. Mason, you're going to follow up. Oh, or is he? No. He is still alive. Is there any extra spirits coming through? He's busy chasing Fabi. There's the spirits, but now he has to back out. Moon Meander is coming in, and Moon Meander wants to get that kill. One more hit needed, and it is going to be there. It's a one-for-one -one trade off. Meanwhile, though, Storm Spirit, though, Storm Spirit is not doing anything. So, looking at that fight recap, so one for one trade off, but favoring the side of Immortals is actually helping them a little bit. But we see them grouping up, and this is. Is there smoke? Yeah, there is a smoke, but no smoke movement. Thought that there might have been one. Dubu, though, going in onto MSS, trying to delay this and slow up as much as possible. And here it comes Forev. Unfortunately, though, Beast Master could just eat through the trees, so. There's no body blocks actually coming through there for using the tree, which is quite surprising. But this might just be the tier 1 tower top dropping. QO as well, trying to do as much damage as possible onto Obed, and Obed drops! Because the hammer was dropped onto his head. QO. Well, that's 2-0 for QO. 
Top tier one tower has dropped. Middle tier one tower. Let's see how long this survives. Q, of course, does have 16 int that ha that he has stolen, so he can start doing quite a bit of damage here. And he does start slowly but surely start becoming a tower taker, especially at that level 25 mark with a plus 60 seconds um, in steel. He, you know, he just has the int always. But Storm Spirit wants to go in onto the Wisp, but the Wisp tethers himself out. He does get slowed up and the TP coming in or the Treant coming in to even help protect him. Immortals starting to, starting to take shape here, starting to take control back of this game. And eight minutes in, let's have a look at the net worth. Top two are in favor of Immortals. And sure, they might have lost the bottom lane. Oh, wait, let's quickly have a look here at MSS. Are we going to see anything? There is, of course, a Primal Roar if they need to use it. There is no Ice Path, but the slow is coming through here on the uh, with, with the Liquid Fire. They're trying to do as much as possible. However, Bulbuck comes down with a Smackdown. Can they actually do anything else to get the second kill? They can't. So, well, another kill going in favor of DC, but... As I was busy saying in the beginning, sure, they lost bottom lane quite significantly, but Immortals, just because of that, okay, Nature's Prophet is now third in net worth, but they were top two, middle and top. They won those two lanes quite easily and quite handily. Looking at the Bloodseeker, I mean, he is currently very poor. He's sitting on 2,600 versus his counterpart on the Sven that was in the lane, sitting on 4,100, and we're actually missing a kill there onto the Wisp. That's even going to boost Mason even further. So, Mason going to be the saving grace at this point for his team, sitting 4 and 0. Oh. Abed not doing as well as he would have liked. Only sitting at 3,000 versus his counterpart, nearly on 5k. So, everything is on Mason right now. And Mason does have his Mask of Madness up. Do they have any stacks up, though, for him? That's the big question, and I don't see any. And this is the time in the game when you want to have like three or four camp stacks. You want to have this camp stack, this camp stack. You want to have these stacks three times, if you can. Times three. You want to have your ancient stack. Well, there's a two, two stack here. You want this to be a three plus as well. Because the Sven can just clear through them literally within a minute. You'll be able to get two and a half to three K, two, two and a half to three K gold by clearing one, two, three camps out. Move towards here. Clears out one, two, three camps. And then, hey, there's your two and a half, three k gold. That's an easy blink dagger up. But let's have a look. Are they going to stack now? We're waiting for it. Regen run up though on our bed, and that's quite big as well. Best run in the game, in my opinion, for Storm. And Storm Spirit slowly but surely working up towards. Well, he's just going to get our cane boots up to start off with. Having a look at the Sven, what's his next item going to be? Uh, just going to be the standard Echo Saber build, no Blink Dagger in first for the Sven. So he's going for the farm-oriented build. He wants to be able to actually fight longer instead of going for a pick-off. And I do agree with that because they do have that lineup itself. Looking at his counterpart here on the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker going for the Hand of Midas, knowing that they're going to have to take this game late. And they're busy pushing out towards the Tier 2 Tower top. So getting the push down with the Jakiro, with the Nature's Prophet as well. It just does so much, but middle lane. Nature's Prophet is actually here on the middle side, so... Ancient Apparition Ultimate flying through. Oh, it's not going to clip 4F, so 4F should actually be okay from this. But they're still diving. Obed actually going in onto 4F. 4F is being pulled out. There comes Bulba as well, managing to get the stun. And even though MP came through a little bit later, they want to go in for more. They want to try and do anything they can. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. The top tier 2 tower was actually taken there, so... It's a single hero for a tier 2 tower. However, the ultimate comes through from MSS. They do manage to get the multiple stuns. The chain stun here onto MP. And that's two heroes down. They do manage to get the counter kill up here onto the Ancient Apparition. But they want to go in for more. The hammer was dropped from Cure. Cure is on a killing spree right now. Now they want to turn around. Beastmaster might be in a lot of trouble right now. It's just more int. More int. More int. And that is just going to be 26 intel stolen up here for Qo. Qo getting that double kill. And once again, just proving himself to be this insane mid laner that just does not want to die. And DC has to be very careful because if Cure starts getting out of control like he did in game number one, they're going to be in a, well, in big trouble. Sure, they're 6-12 behind in regards with kills, but they're 2k up as well. And if you have a look at the experience, experience though is in DC's favor, but not for long. With these kills and with these fights that, uh, and the split that's actually happening, 
Yeah, there you go. Experience actually going into Immortal's favor right now. That's purely because they can split push. They can actually gain more XP around the map than DC can. DC wants to try and move together more often than not. Well, guys, let's have a look here. Some people in chat saying, oh, Kane Rune is better for Storm. I mean, meh, I like, I like regen. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. But let's quickly look at the Necrobook timings that's going to be coming out here. Probably around a minute left still for Necrobook 1. Oh, wait, we do see Dubu. No, he's just dropping his macro pie down. Just to push out the wave a little bit. And Immortals, they have a lineup that they want to fight. They want to push, push out. They want to take quick pickoffs in and out with a lineup. Uh, DC is not giving them that chance right now. But at the same time, it's also allowing MP to actually slowly but surely come back in regards with farm. He will have his hand of Midas up now as well, playing for that late game build. After that, we'll you know see what kind of build he actually goes for. Nature's Prophet, he already has a full solo crest up. Um, I saw... Nah, I don't know what I saw earlier. So having the solo crest up is going to help, especially up against the Sven. Keep in mind, the Sven's Warcry, of course, does give him extra um, extra armor. And, well, here are the stacks that we actually spoke about earlier on. So, trying to counter the Sven's Warcry there with the solo crest. And in my opinion, solo crest is probably still one of the best items in the game. So I do like that. Coming up here for the Nature's Prophet. Uh, looking at OD. OD does have a full 4 staff up. Going in straight away for a Hurricane Pike. Not even worrying to... Or like splitting it up. He wants to get the, that Hurricane Pike up. He wants to get mobility up. To try and counter the, to try and counter the likes of um, DC's jump engage. So to speak. From DC side though. Ancient Apparition. Being poor as always. Poor Moon Meander. He sacrifices so much for his team. And Storm Spirit. I mean, Networth currently sitting 4th, so 4th slash 5th. He did not have the best start. And I have to say, uh, OD just completely, not solo destroyed him because Fabi was there, of course, to help out. But Kuo just like outplayed Arbit there quite a bit in the middle lane. And wait, are we going to see some kind of engagement here before I continue on talking? Nope, they decided to back off. But Storm Spirit slowly but surely working up towards that Bloodstone. He actually nearly has it. Probably only around 900 gold away. Because he'll get the energy booster, vitality booster. Yep, 900 gold away. The big problem here though is Immortal. They're just pushing up towards the tier 3 tower top. Here comes the Ancient Apparition. Auto and flying through. And there's a huge Echo Slam coming through from the Earthshaker. That's going to be one hero down. MP's going to be the next one to fall. If they, they just need one more right click on him. Bobo, unfortunately, he is taking a lot of damage as well. And the hammer got dropped. Encounter there from the Outlaw Devourer. However, the Wisp does manage to actually save them. The IO comes in. That Echo, that Dunk, that Ancient Apparition Ultimate, it just was not enough. It's a 2 for 2 trade off, so to speak, but it's going to be a 3 for 2 right now. Oh no, wait. QO is still here. He's still destroying everyone. He's just right clicking. QO is a beast coming through right now. This is going to be another kill. This is going to be a full team wipe. This is the best fight that DC could have hoped for. Came in with a 3 man Echo, 3 man a Ancient Apparition Ultimate. But there was nothing after that. This venture hit once or twice. It's like a pea shooter hitting you at this point. He just could not do anything. And the entire team wipe coming through. I actually thought DC had that. Okay. Just after that fight. That just put Immortal so much higher in my book. In regards with what they can actually achieve. Have a look at the experience graph. Literally drop back to zero. No. Actually I lie. Just from that fight. 2,000 now in favor of Immortal. Gold being for, uh, basically 4k as well. Massive spikes going the way of Immortals, and they were leading already. If I was DC, I'd start worrying right now because you just had an Echo Slam, Ancient Apparition Ultimate, and a Sven Stun coming through, and you managed to kill two. What more could you have hoped for? Where's the extra damage going to be coming from here?
Well, here's a smoke up coming through from Immortal right now. I mean, they can smell this victory. They can smell this 2-0. And there's the blink for it. Oh, unfortunately, they could not get it. Bulba just so quick on those fingers. He manages to get out, but there's a Wisp relocate coming in right now. Bulba's in a lot of trouble. The Ice Bot goes through. Does manage to actually hit him. Now they want to turn around. They want to go for more. Unfortunately, there's a Tier 2 tower. So the entire side of DC just makes a beeline for that side. But this does also open up Rosh. And of course, they do have a Solo Crest. So this rush will be taken down quite quickly. Ancient Apparition Ultimate flying through. However, it is going to catch onto three heroes right now. Can they actually do anything about this? DC is not in the best position and they're just going to be giving this up. I don't actually think that they can take this. However, there's the TPs. They are going to try and do this. Can they actually... Oh, there's further TPs coming through. Yeah, no. They, they're going to have to back off. They can't move in. They can't do anything. The Wisp is actually just keeping everything. However, is this going to be the Dyker is actually fallen? Is this going to be a Snatch? Arbed actually manages to take the Aegis. They managed to get the Rush kill as well. No Snatch coming up there. Exactly what they needed. This is DC's time to actually turn this around. Arbed, of course, did die. But hey, guess what? He had the Aegis. A buyback coming through here from the Wisp as well. And that's just going to be DC saying, well... We got exactly what we needed. Have a look there. Abed didn't snatch the Aegis. He managed to get the kill on Rosh. And he managed to get the Aegis. That is massive for the side of DC showing, hey, they still have quite a bit left to, um, in the tank if they go for sneaky plays like this. And if any team can do it, it is DC. Well... Forever might be in a bit of trouble right now. Echo Slam used straight here onto Nature's Prophet. Ancient Apparition Ultimate flying through as well and blown up. But Wisp came in trying to help his teammate out. He of course came in with QO. QO is currently sitting on 8 and 0. Oh. Is this going to be QO's first death? No, QO is busy running up here towards the Shrine and QO wants to go in for more. Look at how much damage he's doing. 41, 45 uh, ints actually stolen. QO is just right clicking everyone down. And can they do anything about this? The TP is coming out here from, unfortunately, from MSS, I think. And they did manage to get out of that alive. Kyo, 9 and 0. Oh. What can you do against this guy? I mean, he is literally schooling the side of DC by himself. Not really. That's actually a complete team effort. But sitting 9 and 0, oh, look at his net worth. Currently sitting on 12,200. That is more than 3k up on the Sven. And this might just be Sven dropping more. Yeah, QO, 10 and 0, guys. QO is godlike. Somebody kill him. Let's have a look here. With the Sven dead, does Sven have buyback? He does if he needs to use it. And he's going for that Blink Dagger up now. Which is, I think if he can't get that Blink Dagger up, that might actually change a few things. But he still needs his BKB before he can actually do anything about this. Well, TP up top lane. Maybe trying to scout this out. Oh, can they actually get him? Arbid. Arbid is there. Are they going to see him? Yeah, Forever actually does manage to scout him out. But unfortunately, he'll just be able to get out. And DC currently leading in regards with kills, 18 to 15. But having a look at the net worth up and down once again, just like game two, but also uh, just like game one, sorry. But just like game one as well, every time that DC comes back, um, Immortals comes back even harder. Except for the XP. Keep that in mind. We're talking, we're talking about gold here. DC comes back and then Immortals just pushes it even further. DC comes back a little bit. Immortals pushes it even further. So let's have a look. DC can do this. They can take this. However, is this going to be a Lincoln's up? No, first Yule Scepter up for the Storm. Are we going to see any silences coming up here for the side of Immortals? Let's have a quick look here through the item progression. It is going to be a full-on Lincoln Sphere up for the OD. Uh, there is a silence on the Bloodseeker, but that's an ability. No, for, no silence item there. It is only the Orchids currently on the Nature's Prophet. But I think that that is going to be enough. Nature's Prophet just that needs to be in range of the Storm. And that Storm is dead. Let's have a look here though. Top lane. DC is currently pushing out bottom tier 2 tower. And this is going to basically mean that the top tier tier 3 tower is going to fall. And yeah, here we go. Ultimate flying through here from 4F. This is going to be the tier 3 tower. There are the Treants 
pushing this down as well. Multiple TPs coming in now, and they should be able to see this. They should be able to scout this. Can they actually get the kill? Yes, they do. They get the tower. Just, um, no, not tower. They're not. Tower destroyed. Tower kill. Tower. Whatever you want to call it. And they're going to back off. Very structured play coming through here from the side of Immortals. However, I do like this. Moon Meander, he was, he, he was staying bottom. He sent his ultimate up top, keeping the AoE of his ulti as big as possible. And he managed to actually get a tier 2 tower in exchange. So even though, sure, they lost a tier 3, they managed to get something out of it. And at this point, DC is hungry. You know, they need to get something or trade, even if they don't trade up. Any kind of trade at this point is good for them. Hobbit sitting on 15 bloodstone charges at this point. He's still struggling to work towards that dual scepter. It's 23 minutes in the game at this point. But the these 15 charges, I mean, if he can start getting these up and just increasing them, he'll be able to zip in towards the back line of Immortal's defense, take out the Jakira, take out the Wisp quite quickly, just be a nuisance. But what's actually coming through here? Oh, they don't manage to get. There's the career kill. And Dubu might be in a lot of trouble right now. Here's the engagement. Agent Apparition Ultimate flying through. The first person to die. QO is beyond godlike at this point. That's three heroes down for the side of DC. I should just be focusing on QO, but there's two fights happening simultaneously. And let's have a look here. There you go. Four heroes down. And that is going to be five. QO getting a triple kill. 13 and 0. His Hurricane Pike's going to be up right now. And... Hurricane Pike, Blink, as well as Lincoln Sphere. He's sitting with 32 intel stolen, level 20, so he has extra 15 intel as well. This game is starting to look very bleak for the side of DC. I don't know why they wanted to take a fight split up. One, two here, three, four here, and then a fifth here. That's not where you want to be with a Wombo combo with a team fight lineup where you want to go in with the Earthshaker stun followed up by an Ancient Apparition Blast as well as a Sven. And being split up the whole time, Immortals, I mean, that's their playstyle. They have high mobility heroes that sort of split the fight up. They take the fight and then they draw every single person away from the fight, forcing DC to be in positions that DC doesn't want to be in. Well, guys... Currently, <laughs> Dubu might be in quite a bit of trouble right now. He gets stunned up. There's no support, no help for him. But DC is very scared. They think Dubu is... They literally think Dubu is bait right now. And he's just strolling out. I mean, if you're a post 5 Jakira and that happens, you, the entire team's on top of you and you just get a walk away, that shows where exactly the... Well... He does get an ancient apparition blast to the face. But still, if you get a walk away from that, just shows the enemy team is really scared right now. And considering they have a team fight lineup, it is quite surprising. But 10k gold lead in favor of Immortals. DC. I mean, they started off quite well. And if you have a look at the gold graph, I just want to make sure there's no big fights happening. Gold graph there had an early lead around the 8-9 minute mark. It was even. But the big turn came once again around the 15 16 minute mark and this is just going to be for a dropping and that's a big kill that just gives well storm died in the previous fight so of course he lost a couple of bloodstone charges now he managed to get some back he manages to get up his yule sept and that's going to actually keep him alive just a little bit longer in these fights but meanwhile sure immortals lost their nature's profit but they managed to get a tier 2 tower in return just getting more map control up. We might even see some deep wards coming down. We haven't even spoken about this Bloodseeker because he's currently 1 and 4. He hasn't been that impactful, but all he needs to do is just drop his blood right. Drop his blood right in the middle of the fight. Everyone splits up, and that is where your Nature's Prophet, your OD, just come into play. OD currently sitting with a full Moonshot. Going up for that Moonshot because he, you know... He hasn't died yet, and he's getting off so many attacks at this point. It's just going to increase his intel so much um, in regards to the amount of damage output that he can actually do. So, Let's have a look here and see what can DC do to try and bring this back. The Shadow Blade's nearly up on the Earthshaker. One of the big things here, though, is going to be the buyback status of the side of DC and DC. 
Who has it? Oh wait, we are, we're actually seeing a rotation coming through here. Are they gonna go into Boba? Boba's trying to... Trying to do something, I don't know what, but he just gets blown up and that's gonna be QO, 14 and O. Looking on the side of DC, who has buyback, who has not? Sven has buyback, Boba has buyback, as well as Abed and uh, Moon Meander, so... They're still doing okay, considering. But this is going to be Immortals push up towards high ground right now. And they already have taken a full lane of Rax. 18 Apparition Ultimate flying through. It's going to hit onto Dubu all the way from top lane. Big area of effect. Dubu's just going to back off. The big thing though is QO. I mean, he has 16 in stolen. And he's just... It's like a mini machine gun <laughs> basically coming through here with his moonshot up. Eight, uh, the Nature's Prophet Ultimate flying through as well, just trying to clear out as much as possible. Arbit zipping in, trying to do what he can. Dubu is in quite a bit of, well, you know, quite low HP and they do decide to back off. But hey, guess what? They've already lost their tier 3 tower. Well, guys, Immortals just playing so well currently. Bas basically, this game looks exactly like what Game 1 did um, towards the end stages of Game 1. And Immortals actually showing a lot of composure, not just forcing the fights over here, not just trying to force the Tier 3, but uh, not Tier 3, but the entire racks. But he takes it down. He takes the Tier 3 down. They take the Tier 3 down. Sorry, I'm, I was busy looking at what the chat was saying. They take the Tier 3 down. They back off, they make sure that they don't lose anyone else, and there's a smoke up from DC. This is desperation play, but a smoke coming through here from Immortals as well. They're busy wrapping into Rosh, and is, is there going to be any kind of scan coming up here from any of the two teams? Nope, DC's busy wrapping around top. Are they going to, they will scout out the, no, they don't scout out anything. The Hawk is being positioned. Nicely over here, however, they might actually, if they move a little bit further down, Forib might be spotted out here. And yes, the pings come through. DC's actually in a very good position considering where they're at, but there you go. Smoke actually does get popped. Are we going to see any kind of further engagement coming through here? The problem is DC is once again split up in positions they don't want to be. And this is just Immortal saying, well, this is our game. We're just going to push straight through. There's no glyph. This means we get a full lane of racks. And DC can't do anything. DC, no. Okay, Immortals have said, no, now we're actually going to take the fight. Waiting for DC to actually push into Rosh. And let's zoom out here. Let's actually have a look here. <laughs> QO just goes in there with a sneaky um, ultimate. But unfortunately, nothing happens with that. Let's have a look. The stun comes through onto QO from Mason. But unfortunately, they don't manage to do anything here. The four staff is actually there onto OD. OD, unfortunately, is a little bit away from the fight. So they can't really do anything. But it is going to be MP versus Sven. The first hero to die is actually going to be the Earthshaker. Can they do more? Four elves busy right-clicking like a beast. They do manage to get the kill onto the Sven as well. Another one to chase for more. They do manage to ping out a couple of the heroes. And this is going to be QO getting yet another double kill. Four heroes down. This might just be good game. Let's have a look. Are the buybacks there? A thousand? No buy. Oh, well, there's a buyback up here on Sven. It's still early game. 31 minutes in. There's no buyback up on the Earthshaker. Buyback up on Beastmaster if he needs it. No buyback up on Storm, but he respawns quite quickly. So it's going to be one lost fight here for DC, but what can they actually do about this? Let's have a look. MSS. He will have his Primal Raw up in 15 seconds. They're going to ditch this Rax, wait for all the ultis to be up again. There's no Echo Slam. So, yeah, there you go. QO just comes through. He does not have a BKB, but he has the Aegis, so he's just going to be standing there. Currently 16 and 0. Ancient Apparition Ultimate flying through. It seems like there's a homing beacon up here on Dubu the whole time. AA's ulti is just finding him. And the pings are coming through right now. Moon Meander is just being eaten down here by the Triot. And the entire team of DC is alive, but can they actually do anything? There's a zip pin coming through from Arbed. The big problem is QO, he has 20 intel stolen already. He's not level 25 just yet, but he's actually blinking it forward. He's stealing more intel. He's just doing so much damage, but the Ghost Theft is keeping Moon Meander alive right now. But that's going to be the Earthshaker. Earthshaker is actually going to be the second person to fall. This is going to be good game coming through here. No, the buybacks are there. Oh, wait, no, buybacks from Immortal. And, oh, QO just 
basically scouting this out. He still has his Aegis of the Immortal. And unfortunately, Io comes through. Basically gets a double stun. And this might be the first death here for Odie. Um, for Odie. Is, can he actually do anything about this? Odie's just turning around, hitting Mason. Look at the amount of damage he's doing. He hits like a truck. He just destroys the Sven. What can you do about that? 17 0 and 5. QO is a beast coming through here. GG, well played. Immortal just completely dominating DC off QO's back the whole time. DC started off well, but this has been the QO show the whole time, in my honest opinion. I'm not saying that the rest of Immortals is actually not performing or not doing what they're supposed to. Because they're doing everything they're supposed to. They're creating the space. The Jakiro is there. The Nature's Prophet, I have to say, he just played so well for me. Constantly pushing out the waves, being that presence, getting the um, Orchids up as well. But guys, GG well played to Immortals, taking this 2-0. Next game on the books, I think it is the Dire versus... Who am I casting? Give me a second. Give me a second, I actually forgot. Uh, let's quickly just open this up. Ta -ta -ta. So the next game will be Dire versus VGJ. I hope it's as entertaining as this. I hope it's as action packed as this. Thanks so much for joining in, guys. I mean, um, you know, basically solo casting is not the easiest thing in the world, but I do appreciate all the support that you guys have actually shown here on the chat. You guys have been awesome. You guys have been amazing, and hopefully, I'll be able to cast quite a bit more for you guys. Um, bring in a co cost or two every now and then as well. Thanks so much. I will check you guys for the next games. Immortals, congratulations. QO, what a beast, man. What a beast. New 11k player incoming.